Right, so we're going to try and finish this off today, I think. Um, what we need to do is find out if our one hertz timer is actually working. So I've got myself one of these little uh, headers. Are they called headers? Pins, whatever they're called. Uh, and I've got five on ground. Now, what I should have done is probably put that in one long line, but it doesn't really matter. It's done now. So I'm going to solder this in on the reverse like that. It's probably not going to be too straight, but I'm not overly worried. Now, as I learned before, I need a little bit of flux because these pads are kind of small. So uh, it just sort of helps a little bit. Just throw a bit on. Uh, sorry for the delay in doing this. I had to go away for work. Um, New York, actually, it was really cool. Um, it was a lot, a long hours. So it was, I don't know, roughly 12 hour days every day. Um, but it was good fun and <laughs> The, uh, we had some incredibly bad weather. So it was the, what did it, what was it called? The typhoon? No, cyclone bomb, I think it was called. Anyway, it was, um, it was very cold while I was there, but there'll be some people will say, well, that's not really cold, is it? But it was minus 13 degrees one day. In fact, it got up to, uh, got down to rather. Oh, I'm just gonna move this around so I can angle it better. Uh, it got down to, uh, minus 18 on one day, which is pretty darn incredible. And not what I was expecting. So I didn't bring, well, I didn't bring clothes for that kind of temperature. That looks okay. Now, let's see, where's my multimeter? Banging around, sorry. Does this do hertz? Yeah, it seems to do hertz. I'm hoping it will read one hertz, but that might be a bit of a stretch. We might have to just probe around on the other values and see what we can get. So I've got some battery somewhere. Aha. Let's come out a little bit, shall we? There we go. This thing is dirty. Now, ground to ground and power to power. Now I've got no LEDs plugged into this at the moment, so we're just gonna hope that we can read the value of one hertz. We'll see though. So there's my ground and there is one hertz. No, two hertz, no. Okay, I get nothing at all. Let's try the voltage and see if my batteries are just dead. I'm getting nothing from the batteries, that's probably why. Well, it turns out the terminals on that um, little battery connector were pretty corroded and even though it switched on, um, it didn't work. So. Plan B, I've got one of these USB to crocodile clip connectors. So connectors, wires, whatever. We're gonna be using one of these. Uh, the circuit will take five volts, so hopefully I should just be able to plug this in. So this is ground. It's gonna go there without shorting, hopefully. I don't know if it'll do it without shorting, actually. Okay, so I've got um, one of these DuPont cables. DuPont, I think that's how you say it. I don't know though. Um, we're gonna plug one of those into there and the other one can be gripped on. Perfect, no shorts. And then that one goes onto that end. Great. All right, let's give this a go. It doesn't light up, there'll be nothing to see. So we're just gonna hope we can read the, let's try the volts first. Let's make sure we're getting power. Cause this power bank might switch off. Does that mean there's a short if it's 2.9 volts? That doesn't seem right. Oh, there we go. The power bank wasn't on, so it must have been residual charge in the capacitors. So let's now probe around with the Hertz, see what we can find. 
Well, that says 28 hertz when it should be one. Power bank switched off again. Great. I don't think you can read down to one hertz. So let's see if we can probe around on the IC and find some other values. There should be 32 hertz over here somewhere. The power bank's not staying on. Come on now. Oh, I'm gonna have to find a different solution. So plot twist, um, it turns out I've just did a, a little measurement on my scope um, and while my scope doesn't have frequency measurement, it does give me the, uh, the time base and I can look at the divisions just like this mat actually. Um, and so when I set it on one second per division, the, uh, the frequency on the one hertz coming out here didn't match. And I thought, hang on a minute, there's something wrong here. So I did a lot of testing. I tried out um, my multimeter to see if I could read up, read any of these uh, sort of higher frequencies that come out. And unfortunately it didn't work. And then I thought, what could be wrong? So I checked my previous board, which was the one hertz timer. And it's exactly the same. I looked at the schematic, exactly the same. However, I may have used the wrong loading capacitors. So um, it's not very bright, is it? Let's see if we can improve that. Not really. There we go, that's a bit better. So these look like they're 22 picofarad when actually uh, it calls for 33 picofarad. So I'm gonna switch these ones out and see if that makes a difference. So jump cut uh, a couple of days. Um, so I was messing around with this on Sunday. It's now Tuesday, it's not finished. Um, I don't know where I left off now because it's been a couple of days. So sorry if this is a really bad joint to the video. However, um, I tried to like plug all this into power and everything and, and check that it was working, but it wasn't working. Um, I checked it on the scope and it wasn't putting out um, the right frequency on the one hertz, two, two hertz or anything in fact. It all seemed to be really far out. Um, and then I realized <laughs> that uh, my original sort of prototype for the, for the one hertz timer, this one here, used a very different crystal. So I've got two different kinds here. I've got uh, these ones here, which are 20 pieces of 32768 crystals, um, three by eight millimeter oscillators. Now, I didn't think, and maybe this is very naive, uh, but I didn't think there'd be much difference between those and the original ones that I'd used. Now, the original ones that I'd used are these ones. These are, um, I think they're two by six millimeters ones, these ones. Um, and the people I bought these from actually provided the load capacitance that's required for these. And so that's what I did my little calculations for the, uh, the capacitors, which are 33 picofarad capacitors and the 6.8 meg uh, resistors, and the, also the uh, 330 meg, uh, 330K resistor. So I used that. Um, and I, th <laughs> I thought it would be the same for this uh, crystal, but it isn't. These ones will not work at uh, with the load capacitance that I'd set. So we've got these ones. I'm going to have to find some more of these. So I've bought another pack and uh, I will test them out. If they work, then we'll use these ones instead. Um, and I'll have to tinker around with what these require. So anyway, um, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and, and put on the, the rest of the components. Um, and while I'm doing that, I'll tell you a little story about how I figured it all out. Oh, just in case it wasn't clear, I'm going to speed up the video. Gosh, this is going to take a while actually, because I've just realized I haven't done any of the resistors yet. Oh dear. Okay. So ever so excited was I to uh, be playing around with this board. Now I've got the one hertz timer on there. Um, I immediately put some power onto it, which actually turned out to be a bit of a pain because uh, I realized I didn't really have that many... Uh, five volt power sources around that I could just plug into, but uh, I managed it in the end. And then I immediately, because I realized I had no output on this at the moment, all I had was uh, the pins that I could test. 
I thought, how am I going to test the frequency on this? So I tried it on my multimeter and that didn't work. Um, I thought, oh, maybe that's because uh, the frequency is too low. One hertz is it's pretty low to be testing. Um, and then I thought, oh, maybe it's because uh, my multimeter can't go down to those uh, frequency levels because I guess it's harder to test those lower frequencies. That didn't work. So um, I thought, oh, I'll use my oscilloscope. That would be a good idea. Um, I can read the waveform, even at one hertz, I can let it scan across and I can just look at the time um, base and see what, uh, see what we're looking at. So I plugged it in <laughs> and what did I get? Uh, for the one hertz, I got something like three seconds was, um, was the division. So that wasn't right. I thought, what's going on here? Have I done something wrong? So I pulled out my, um, I pulled out my original design for the one hertz timer and had a look. And lo and behold, I'll show you. Here is my one hertz timer in all its glory. I really like it still, it's great. And then I turned it over and there's that bodge wire, which I'd completely forgotten about because this was in the breadboard the whole time. And I'd sort of forgotten that I'd done that. Now, the problem with that <laughs> is I didn't know whether I'd corrected it in the schematic. So all I did was copy my uh, schematic and board layout, um, which I then deleted. I redid the board layout for it. I copied that over to this board. So I was using exactly the same schematic. And I thought, wow, what if I've not done it? What if I haven't corrected that? Then I've got a big problem because I've just made these boards. But I thought, well, maybe it's something else. So um, I looked around on my schematic to make sure that I'd made the same corrections. And I, it appeared that I had, I couldn't really see the issue. So I wanted to see whether the issue wasn't that at all, whether I was just, where I pulled the wrong trace out of the 4060 and I was getting the wrong frequency. So uh, I thought, get the, get the oscilloscope on there, let's find out what that frequency is. So I tried to trace them out on my schematic and I couldn't see anything wrong. And my oscilloscope doesn't give me the frequency. It doesn't do any calculations for you because uh, it's quite an old Gould scope, Gould 400 it is, so, oops. Um, so I was having to count it manually, but the problem is it doesn't give you a very accurate reading. So then I started looking around for a new scope and I thought, well, I'll buy a new scope and it will just mean I'll have to spend a few days waiting for that. But then it occurred to me, perhaps I could just make a frequency counter with an Arduino and, and do it that way. But then I couldn't be bothered to do that. So I just borrowed a, an oscilloscope at work, a, a really nice Roden Schwartz, I think it's or Roden Schwartz, really nice one. Um, and you can see some footage of that right now, actually. It was really, really nice. Um, and I got some help from the technicians there who helped me rig it up. In my first test, I had the old crystal on there. I've now replaced it with another one. And all I was getting was ground noise. So I was getting the ground, like 50 hertz from the mains. So it, I didn't know how that was working. We thought at first it was the power supply, but it turns out there was no signal coming out at all. And what the, the, uh, the power supply that we were using was triggering from the mains. So that was the only, the dominant frequency was the main signal. And it was very confusing for a while. And then I said, well, it's probably cheap Chinese components or I'm not using the right load capacitance or it's just a really duff crystal. So let's use a different one. So I used the same one that I had in my prototype and a voila, it worked. So a bit of a lesson for you there. I thought I was gonna have to redo the whole thing. Now, oh no, I've lost that one. <laughs> there it is. So never really give up on anything or assume that you know exactly what's going on. Because first off here, I think I know what the problem was, but all of this may not work now. 
So I've decided I'm going to buy a new scope. Ooh. And I'm sort of thinking about a hand tech one that I've seen online. I'm going to buy it second hand because I don't have a lot of money. So um, I'll just be buying a really cheap one. I know that people say you should spend more and it will last longer, blah, blah, blah. But I use an oscilloscope maybe once every couple of months. So uh, I don't really need one, but I do want one that can do frequency because it seems to me that that's kind of important. And me messing around with um, looking at the time base and stuff and then trying to guess what the, uh, the frequency is a little bit is kind of annoying. Um, I could get a frequency counter, I could knock one with, um, up with an Arduino, but if I just get a, uh, an oscilloscope that does it for me, then I won't need several different instruments to perform what essentially is the same job. Um, I just want to be able to read that frequency, see what it looks like on the scope, and also um, check that it's regular. So if anyone's got any advice on which scopes to get, then I'm more than happy to listen. I think someone was mentioning the last time I did this, I should get a smaller tip on my iron. Um, I have got a smaller tip, but I haven't put it on because I'm used to using this one and I'm stubborn. So uh, I do appreciate the advice and I think I'm going to take it, but uh, not for this project. I'm very used to using this one. And I don't think I'm terrible at soldering. I think a lot of, I mean, I've had quite a few comments to say I am, so maybe I should pay attention to that uh, and believe that I am, but it's not generally the worst soldering I've ever done. Uh, what I'm gonna do with my old scope is we've got a hack space here. Um, it's not that far from me actually, and I can, I've already contacted them to say, has anyone got any advice on a new scope? to see if anyone's recently bought one, and one that they can recommend, like a Handtech or what are those other cheap ones? Like a, I know there's a, a relatively cheap Rigol one, but it's still 300 quid, and I'm looking to spend about 200. So this Handtech one that I'm sort of going for on eBay, which will finish in a couple of days time, so I'll know if I need to buy a proper new one or not. Uh, that one will be currently 130. So pretty cheap. And this Gould scope is gonna go to the Hackspace. Because it's a really nice little, it's a digital storage oscilloscope. So it's useful, can show you a massive long time base. So this has become a little bit of a, <laughs> the bane of my life, this project, but um, I'm still enjoying it. And I really wanna get it finished so that uh, I can open source the, uh, the schematic, the PCB layout, and uh, and also sell it, possibly. We'll see. That's still a little up in the air because I think I'm going to have to source some more oscillators and uh, find a way to print these boards in a relatively cheap fashion because um, I'm going to be doing it at cost and I don't want it to cost a lot for the people who want to buy it. So. The cheaper it is, cheaper it is, the more likely people are to pick it up. And there's only going to be about 20 of them, so it's not going to be a long run. There we go. I'm just going to have a quick look, make sure I've done all the sides. Yeah. Now, uh, we've got some uh, diodes that need to go on there. Now I haven't actually tested it <laughs> with the diodes in the breadboard. So fingers crossed that works. That's my fingers crossed. Let's come out a little bit, shall we? Right now we need to do the diodes really. Uh, so I picked up some diodes. I don't really think they're going to be the right ones. They're massive, but if, well, if they fit, then they're the ones that we're going to be using. It doesn't particularly matter all is it's essentially a signal diode so it's just going to reset the next IC so let's take the board out and then directional although that one looks like it's definitely in the wrong direction but I'm sure I did it right yeah they fit okay that's okay isn't it all right we'll get those in
I'm not sure what you guys think about really long videos because I was originally going to release it in one big lump, um, but then it actually was inconvenient for me to do it, record it all in one big lump. So um, I released it in parts. But would you rather it were in one big lump or would you rather it is are you fine with it being in parts? Stretch these legs out so it stays in the board. There we go, they're okay. Right, we're going to solder these together. Solder them together? What I mean is just solder the pins. There we go, in focus enough, I think. Again, small little pads. I need to alter this. They're not quite so little, but uh, some flux will, will help in this scenario, I'm sure. A smaller iron, again, would be probably beneficial, but um, you've already poo-pooed that idea, so... Oh, that's okay. There we are. Done. Someone said that I should use a brass sponge. Um, I do use one all the time, just off, a, off camera mostly, to clean the tip. I also found these bad boys as well, the little side cutters. forgotten where they were. Um, I think in the last video I asked if anyone would like, I, think, I guess that's why I also like cutting videos up, but in the last video I asked if people wanted me to put music on my videos when it's long pauses and things like that. Well, overwhelmingly people said uh, no to that, so I won't be putting music on, which I, so yeah, it's a good thing that I sometimes do split these videos up because it means that I get that feedback and implement it straight away, I guess. So, um, LED enable. Did I even use that? <laughs> yeah, I did. Okay. So what I've done there, and I think, I don't know if I told you, but um, I wanted people to have the ability to turn the LEDs off. So if, it, if they're using it battery powered, they can uh, take off a little jumper there or apply a switch to it, whatever you want to do in your if it's got a container or not. So at the moment, that is a, I'm gonna be using a jumper, I think. So I'm gonna to need to find some pins from somewhere, some of these type, uh, and just pop one of those in uh, with some of those little, uh, I don't know what they're called, little jumper connector things. Um, and then we've got some switches. So what do we have? We've got a switch for setting the time, that's 32 kilohertz. 256 kilohertz and a reset switch. Should we put those in? Again, I'm at that point where I'm not even sure if the whole thing's going to work. So a lot of this is a little bit, I don't know, it's just a bit frightening. Does that sound really weird? I guess it does. Oh well, we'll persevere. I don't think I've got very much battery left, so we might end up cutting this into another part, unfortunately. However, we can at least say that there has been some progress in this one. So let's put one of those in. Let's take this out for a second. There's one. I mean, it's looking like a real thing now, which is very exciting. And then this one goes on the back. Not that it matters, it could go on the front or the back. So let's solder the one that's on the back first. So just there. 
again. I'm now like terrified that nothing's going to work. So I'm just going to flux always helps, right? Yeah, I really don't want it to go into a third episode, but it is now something like nine o'clock at night. <laughs> so it might. There we go. That's. I don't like seeing gold left. Is that? That's probably just me. But I don't like seeing any of the pad. Oh well. And then we've got these over here. So let's flip the border over and do those ones. I think if, if this does make it to be a kit, um, it'll be fairly easy to put together. I don't think there's anything that's too difficult. I think um, some of these smaller pads could do with widening out, which I'm fine to do. But otherwise, I think it's fairly easy to, uh, to accomplish with just a normal soldering iron like I'm doing now. Okay, um, I don't think I debounced these buttons, so they're going to be a bit finickety. Finickety? Is that even a word? Um, so it's not a huge amount of accuracy, but well, I'm not overly worried. These ones, they uh, allow you to advance the time very quickly with 32 hertz signal instead of the 1 hertz, or a 256 signal instead of the 1 hertz. So that's going to bounce through the hours. Oh, this is a bit rubbish, this one here. Let's just pop that in a bit more. So everyone with a 4K display can have a nice, a good old look. It looks okay. I know that that diode is kind of annoying, isn't it? That one there. <laughs> it is meant to be that way around, I think. At least that's what the solder mask tells me. What are we missing? So we've got these pin headers down here. They're not important. They're literally there just so you can test the clock or use it as an external clock for something. So this won't require very much power at all to run. Um, especially if you take the LED enable pin out, uh, it will take uh, a very small amount of power. So you can use it as an external clock if you want to. At the top here, we've got three pins here. One says man, clock, and one hertz. Um, and uh, the clock actually runs to the clock of the first 40, 4, 5, 10. Um, and the one hertz is connected down here to the 40, 60. So, um, you can switch it across. So manual goes to these switches and uh, one hertz goes down here. So you can switch this in and out. Um, I don't remember if I was going to use a switch or if I was going to use pin headers. I cannot remember. I may just use pin headers. Um, but I do have a switch that will fit in there, I think. But we'll see. All right, I'm going to go and grab some headers um, and we'll put those in. Right, I've popped on the uh, the headers. These are the things I was talking about. Um, these little header bits. <laughs> I don't really know what they're called. They just stick on and they make the connection. If anyone knows what they're called, that'd be great. I always used to just call them jumpers. Is that right? Um, but it doesn't, I don't know. I did a quick search for jumpers and I couldn't find them on the web. Uh, well, I just got jumpers. Uh, so those are what I'm going to be using. So I've, uh, I've soldered on the pins at the top for manual clock and one hertz and also on the bottom. But I'm now beginning to think that was silly because I've got to put the LEDs in now. So uh, let's do that. And we're going to do super speed through that as well, I think. So where are my LEDs? So on this board, I've popped a little diagram there so I knew which way the LEDs went. But the the outlines also have the, the flat section on, so it should be relatively easy to see. Now I wish I had some like heat resistant foam or something to pop this down on, but I don't. So I might improvise. So are you guys making anything? I'd be really interested to hear, or if, uh, if you guys have got any ideas on what I could make, that would be good to know. 
Anyone seen any cool kits recently? I did record a Lazy Sunday video on late on Sunday. I haven't had time to edit it yet. Uh, it just needs a bit trimming out. Um, and then that will get uploaded and you'll get to see it probably next week, unfortunately, due to YouTube's uh, rather aggressive algorithm. Uh, it'll be annoying. So that's what it's going to look like. Ah, uh, look at it. That That's every component in place now. That is awesome. Right now, how am I going to turn this upside down? I shouldn't have put this. If I hadn't put that capacitor in and that header, then it would have been fine. Oh, no, look, just... I'm going to cry. <laughs> Come on now. How am I going to do this? What? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Why did you approach it like this? Okay, we're just going to do each one individually, spray the legs out, and that way, we'll start again. We'll put the legs out so that they stay in, and then we'll adjust it later. And they'll stay in enough to solder them for a bit, and then we'll just have to go at it again. I think I'm going to look at some more CMOS uh, related circuits soon. Someone recently commented on a video I did. It was the 4026. They commented today, actually. And um, they said, is there any way of making this 4026 reset at 60 or stop at 60? And so I said, yeah, there is actually. You can use a 4081, uh, which is the quad input and gate. And you can connect it to some of the segments that make the bottom half of the six. Because the six is the first one that uses the bottom four segments. Because um, eight is the next one up that does it. Um, so if you have a little logic thing that goes, oh, look, we've got the, uh, the bottom ones up, then uh, it can reset the circuit at that point. So it doesn't really know what its number is, but it, your logic circuit knows when to trigger. So you can do that. I think it's uh, C, D, E, and G. I think those are the, the segments. So I might knock that circuit up because it looks like a fun one to try. Be nice and visual with some LEDs. But I do like working with CMOS. Less so with CMOS SMD versions because not only are they expensive, they're hard to get hold of. You end up having to buy them from China or from Farnell. Um, and then that's just a blooming pain. Right, yeah, there we go. Right, they're all gonna poke down a little bit. I'm not overly worried. In fact, we'll put it in this um, board holder so that, uh... oh, not that way, we're not. We'll put it in the board holder so that uh, it doesn't rattle around too much. Oh, I didn't say, actually, I forgot to mention it. I don't know if I did, actually. Maybe I did mention it, but uh, the channel reached 16,000 subscribers. Um, what, last week or the week before? Or big, it might have been at Christmas time, I'm not sure. But that's pretty cool. It was only um, just before Christmas that I was like, wow, 15,000, and now it's, uh, that's higher than that, which is very cool. How many more have we got left to do? Oh God, loads. I wish I'd, I need to find a better way of doing this. I need like a silicon press or something like that. I remember watching Big Clive do a uh, little multicolored LED thing that he was sort of selling or giving away maybe. Come on now, this one's not working. And um, and he had a kind of press that looked really interesting. There we go. Right, we just need to solder off the other ones now. So let's turn it back over. Get the board in. Solder up the rest, and we'll redo the other sides of them. But we'll do the the uh, undone sides first. God, wouldn't it be absolutely tragic if I soldered all of these LEDs in the wrong way round? Because maybe I put my solder mask on the <laughs> put the solder mask on the other right other side, not the solder mask. What's the writing on top? It is the solder mask, isn't it? I can't remember. Too I'm too tired now, it's really late at night. 
God, remember when I used to do those live streams really late at night and drink loads of whiskey? Haven't done one of those for a while. Well, holy moly, I think it is done. Now, all we need to do is plug it in. God, that's the scary part, isn't it? So, how are we gonna do this? Uh, oh, we use the USB power, actually, that's a good idea. So we've got a USB cable here. I've got a positive and a negative. Right, nothing's happening yet. Um, I'm gonna plug in the manual clock, and then there should be another one of those things for the LED enable. Right, this is where things could go very wrong. <gasps> Look at that. Right, so I just pressed the 32 hertz. Oh my word, it's working. So let's put it on the one, one hertz. <laughs> oh my God, look. One, two, eight, nine, ten. Oh. It's working. Now we get to see if it resets. So it should reset on this one. So this goes to, what is that, one? Oh, it did reset. This one goes to five, doesn't it? So four, five, this should reset after that. Fingers crossed. Please. But why didn't this one carry over? <laughs> oh dear. Slight problem there. So the first two are working. Oh Lord. Why isn't it carrying over? I think the problem is that I'm not pulling the resets low. I thought I am actually, that's what those 10K resistors are for at the bottom. Hang on a minute, let's just throw this into manual mode and fire those through. No, look, we're not, we're only getting the two working. What have I done wrong? Okay, so something else is wrong here. Um, I know I sort of just signed off, but I'm gonna show you this. So I'm counting here. Why does that jump to four? <laughs> have I wired up my LEDs in the wrong order here? Did I put my silk screen on? That's what it's called, silk screen, remembered from before. Silk screen in the wrong order, or have I just, I'm not quite sure what I've done. I mean, that shouldn't go to six. It should reset based off of the 4081, which is on the board, isn't it? Man, that is frustrating. I don't understand what I did wrong. It works on the breadboard. I'm gonna have to go back to the schematic, unfortunately. Urgh! Um, well, that was a dumb freaking mistake. Uh, I've just figured out what it is. It's only been about 15 minutes since it didn't work. Uh, the issue is that I didn't follow my breadboard correctly when I drew the schematic, which it's just, oh, it's one of those really annoying things that I do pretty much every time I design a circuit board. So what's happened here is, uh, a few things actually, more than one mistake. So when reviewing the schematic again with fresh eyes, um, it turns out these three LEDs that were displaying incorrectly, the top and the bottom LED are switched around. So the bottom one is one and the, well actually the top LED is connected to one when it shows four and the bottom one is four. So um, yeah, it, it goes up to five correctly and then resets. So it, it was right, but um, those are switched. Now, the reason none of these other ones are lighting up is because the 4510 has a carry out pin. Now, what I did to make my life easier when creating the schematic, and it didn't make my life easier, and I'll explain it to you because I think probably everyone does something like this occasionally. The, I think I said in the video earlier, it's kind of exactly the same. So this is like a, a duplicate circuit almost. Uh, except with a few minor differences. Well, that's what I did. I duplicated the frickin' circuit and 
on the first 4510 there, it has a carry out signal. And that goes to the second one. So you've got seconds and then tens of seconds. And the carry out triggers that one. So it becomes the clock for the next IC. Problem there is that um, I've left that carry out signal going to the minutes. And because I reset this IC, there is never a carry out. That's unfortunate. What I had intended to do and what I did on the breadboard was the reset signal was the carry out signal for the next one. So every time this reset, the next chip got a clock pulse. Didn't do that on here. I can bodge wire it up, I think. Um, and I will to make sure that I'm right in my assumption, um, but I'm not going to do it tonight because I'm really tired. Um, but I think that is the result. Got a couple of LEDs in the wrong place and I messed up by trying to take a shortcut creating my schematic. So lesson learned there, or probably not, um, but I will fix it. <laughs> anyway, thanks for bearing with me. I know it's been a really long one, so sorry, and I hope you've enjoyed it.